Now, what happens is you've got your spring phase. And the spring phase is actually, it starts early. I mean, it really, this, this movement starts around the middle of February. This winter is probably going to be a little different because it's just so cold out there. It's a lot colder than normal. But usually around the middle of February, that's when you really see the guys get out there and they're starting to go. Middle of February? Yeah, middle of February. Uh, like I said, a buddy of mine was just down. He's a heck of a walleye guy. Didn't even get a bump. Fished all over that thing. Didn't even get a bump. Just up here. Remember when it's like this this time of year, they're volatile to what's going on up here. When that cold front came in, which way did the wind blow? Came out north, right? Cold fronts always come out of the north. That is one of the hardest things to fish. It's been stable now, but we're in high pressure. So it makes it very difficult. So, what will happen, guys, when they get ready to start their migration to go do the spawn, it starts early. You know, we don't think of it, we think in terms of going out bass fishing and stuff, and we're thinking, you know, 55, 60 degree water like we talked about. Pre-spawns, you know, 45, 50. By that time, the walleyes are done. So you have to gear it up a little differently and think about, okay, they're a cooler water fish. Everything happens a little earlier. So start in the middle of February, what happens is you'll have guys go out and they'll start catching a pile of males. And what's happening is they're, they're starting their migration towards their spawning area. Now the biggest one for us is the Spokane Arm. Um, if you go to potholes, it'd be Crab Creek, where it comes in. Anywhere where they've got a, a creek coming in. Usually reservoirs, it's always going to be a river coming in. You go all the way up north, and it may be where the, the Columbia starts running fast. That's where they want to end up at. So what they'll start doing, the boys are eager. When the water's around 36 degrees, they start moving. They start grouping up. They start searching out on these flats, and they're making their way. Be it if they're coming from uh, Seven Bays, they're coming from up north, Split Rock coming down from Neighborly. They're starting to make their move, and they're starting to group up. At this point in time, you go to believe in the electronics. Because you're going to go around until you find schools. Traveling together. You may hop on a flat, and you may not find anything, and all of a sudden you get down here and there's a whole pile of them. Because they're starting to make the move. When they make this move, they're going to want to cruise in that same depth. That 40 to 60 feet. Because that's still where the warmer water's at. But they will still occasionally, if we get the right conditions, pop up here and feed. But you got to move until you find the group. They'll get all the way up to where they're wanting to do the spawning, and they'll be the first ones there. I always get the males first. The females are going to start moving when the water temperature is, say, 40, 42 degrees. That's when the females are going to start moving. That's not uncommon in the spring if you keep moving at that temperature following your contours, working your way towards the spawning area to get on a big sack of fish. Once you find them, they're there. Just keep working them. Because it's not just one fish moving. It's groups. Groups of them coming through. So males first. Females next. Stay in that depth range as you work in your contours. Prime example, you look at the flat across from Seven Bays, you'll always see boats over there. Over there, there's a shelf. It's about 42 feet. And it obviously depends on where the water's at. But there's a steep shelf there. And that's where guys will pick them up at. You'll see guys up at Outhouse Flats, which is around the corner from the arm, going up. There's a break right there. If you look at that on a contour map, you've got a big flat. You've got a triangle basically on each end. They'll follow that contour out. So instead of just going up, and focusing in the winter time on this one triangle spot nice and tight now you're gonna fish the contours all the way down trying to find them <coughs> staying in that 40 to 60 foot mark because like I said they may follow this contour all the way down and they'll be down here where before you were hitting them here they're not gonna make big movements in the winter they're gonna hold up right here you can count on them once you find them that's where they're gonna be at making short moves so you're gonna have to move more Constantly move until you find them. You have to believe in your electronics. You're going to have to go out. You have to turn your sensitivity up. You're going to have to zoom the screen in. 
And what I'll do is I'll just go along real slow. Turn my ping speed up. Go along real slow. That buoy in my hand. When I see what I'm looking for, over it goes. Come around to it and fish it. See what it is. Could be burbot. Could be whitefish. I don't know. I got to fish them. Nothing there. I keep moving. You got to find them. Now, what we're going to talk about, we'll talk about the pre-spawn. And the pre-spawn, just like the bass, it's one of the funnest times. It's one of the funnest times. You're going to catch a lot of fish. You're going to have the big fish. They're wanting to eat. The females want to eat. Males want to eat. Getting ready for the spawn. So, if we're looking at, in relation for you guys, stuff that you would, areas that you would know, by now, you would be heading up, let's say by middle of February, you always see guys out at the point, Spokane, right? Well, that's just a pass-through. They're migrating up through there. By this time when you're pre-spawn, you're going to be getting up towards Blue Creek, Porcupine. You're going to be getting up towards Mile Marker 5 in that area there, working your way up the river. Now, guys, the same thing happens. It happens in Hawk Creek. It happens up north, Kettle, mouth of Colville, anywhere you got the tributaries coming in. But not all of those fish will spawn in those areas. We'll talk about that when we get to the spawn section. But those are the key areas that everybody knows about. The biggest spawning tributary in there is the Spokane Arm. Big river coming in. That's where they want to go. That's why you get so many, so much fish, so many fish pushing up in there. So pre-spawn, you're looking at a water temperature around here, guys. You're looking at 43 to 45. Pre-spawn period is very short. Time frame. Time frame, you're looking at you know middle of March. Could be early, could be later. It just depends. Just depends on the year. 43 to 45. It lasts maybe two or three weeks, once again, depending on the weather. At this time, they're going to chow. They're going to be right up where they want to be at to spawn. What they're doing is they're coming in in the low light hours, early morning, through the night, into the evening, and they're coming up and they're investigating their spawning areas, all the while they're feeding. Something you need to keep in mind with pre-spawn, and this affects all fish, at that time of year, there's very small amounts of forage in the, in the lake, in the reservoir. What happens is all of the last year's hatch, whether it be perch, smallmouth bass, whitefish, whatever, maybe only 5 to 10 percent of them survive. Some of them get eaten, some of them die. So at that time of year, you don't have a massive amount of forage in there. So anything you're running through there, aka bigger plugs, crankbaits, trolling, they're going to hit it because they're taking what's available to them when they come up on these areas. So remember that pre-spawn, you can get a little more aggressive. You can get a little more aggressive. Did you guys watch the show on the drop shot video where we were catching them in the fast water? Pre-spawn ahoy. Every one of those fish was tiny, right? Not really. Not the yeah, exactly. When you time it right, that's what will happen. Like each year's different. That year was before they shut it down. You, you can go up there this year, and there may not even be water up there. Each year's different. Pre-spawn, aggressive, a lot of big fish. Kicking the pants. Okay, you can work it. So, what we're doing now, we're going to go into the spawn. And understanding where they spawn, what they want for the composite underneath them. It'll all help you pick the right spots. And like I said, it's easy down here because you can go up the arm and to, you go down to potholes anywhere where the creek's coming in. You always see guys congregated in there. The walleyes want to spawn in areas of roughly one to six feet. Now, they don't have to have running water. A lot of lakes in the Midwest, no running water. What they want to have, if they don't have water coming in, is they want to be on a wind-blown point. They want to be on a rocky reef. If you understand why, it makes it easier. Now, you don't want to be out in the center where it's just blowing through. Remember when I was catching those fish on the show? I was fishing the 80s. Slower water, right? They're not going to be out in the center. 
everything's just going to get washed away. They're going to be in the slower water. They're going to be on wind, windswept shorelines. The reason why they have to have current is because it aerates the eggs, brings oxygen to them, keeps them free of silt. Now for the substrate underneath them, they want to have gravel all the way up to say golf ball, maybe baseball sized rock. Reason being is if it has silt, the eggs won't survive. What happens with the rocks, when they go in, walleyes are broadcast spawners. Now what that means is, is a female moves in to the area where they want to be at, two, three, four males start pushing on her, she deposits the eggs, they melt them out, the, may, the boys do, in a way they go, they're done. They don't stick around and nest, they broadcast spawn. So there's no guarding of the eggs. Remember how the bass sits on there and guards them? What happens, they want to have that rock so that when the eggs are, are deposited, and as they hatch, they actually go down into the rocks until they can swim, which keeps them from getting washed out of the current, washed down in the current, and it gives them a place to hide. So you got to have that. Now how does that apply to you guys? Okay, if you go up the arm and, okay, the arm shut down, their fish are spawning in there. Well, you can go out and find them on wind blowing points. Not every fish in that reservoir is going to go to a creek or a river coming in. Maybe a big percentage, but not all of them. The first fish to spawn are the ones that are spawning in flowing water at an inlet coming in. Because that runoff coming down is typically warmer. The second ones to go are the ones that are on rocky points, windswept points, windswept shorelines. The last ones to go are the ones that go on reefs. And we don't have a lot of the reef thing around here like they do back in the Midwest. But the reefs are the last one to go because they're out in the center of the body of water. So what that means to you guys is you can always move to find a pre-spawn or a spawning period. You know, you look at kettle. Kettle gets hot later. Guys go up there in June and smack them. Well, the water's colder up there. You go up there maybe five, six degrees colder. That's why. Same way with the bass. When we fish the north shoreline or the southern facing shoreline, they spawn earlier. We can go to a, a northern facing and fish it again. It's the same principle with the walleyes. So we know we got to have moving water. We know we got to have some form of gravel. We know we got to have a windswept point, something to oxygenate them, something to keep them free of silt. Now, if you look at, remember how the bass, not all the eggs ripened at once. They come in, push on her, she goes out, comes back. Typically with a walleye, when she moves in, she'll dump them all at once. They can dump between 50 to 300,000 eggs. Pretty important to let them go, big females. All the boys are coming in. One boy, and this is, this is what's important. Females are the biggest. They have the strongest gene. When they come in, there may be three or four or five males doing their thing, pushing on her as they're broadcast spawning. She's got the big gene. That's why it's important to let her go, because she's going to carry that on, carry that through, produce more of them. Granted, yeah, there's going to be males in there. There's also going to be females in there. You know, a big male may be six, seven pounds around here. Maybe eight pounds max. Females 16, 17, 18, 19. Who knows where it stops. So that's why it becomes very important to let them go.